Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I want to talk about William Ruto's visit to Kisumu and the incidences which took place at Kondele. William Ruto is the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. And what took place in Kondele should not be supported by anybody. William Ruto had a successful trip or tour of Kisumu. He landed yesterday and held a meeting just next here, Susan Oyo Center. Then he went and slept at Siala Resort. In the morning, the deputy president began planning on how he was going to tour or make stopovers with their claim marks at Kondele. It was very clear that the deputy president was very prepared for that particular trip. Because at Siala alone, Siala Resort alone, there were over 1,000 border border riders waiting to escort the deputy president. So when he left Siala Resort, his first stop was at uh, Kesian. Again at Kesian, the deputy president really spoke so well. Then he went to Juakali. And at Juakali, there were issues. There were factions there. Some were that the deputy president should address people there. Some that the DP should not address people there. And also there were propaganda that the deputy president wanted to open or to launch that to Uhuru, Uhuru market at Juakali. And you know that Uhuru market has issues. There are several traders complaining or there are issues about allocation. So there were a lot of tension over that. But I think that was addressed. It was clear that the DP was just wanted to go and address the people, which was successful. Then the deputy president went to Kondela. And that's where chaos erupted. And I'm going to explain that later on. But the deputy president had a successful trip to Kisumu. If you followed the deputy president tour of Kisumu, especially when today morning when he left Siala Resort, the first thing I noted was the choice of music he was playing. The deputy president convoy was playing loud gospel music. That gospel music, there is a way it was so nice and people were really happy and dancing to the tunes. Why was the choice of music made gospel? In Ray Ludinga's rallies, the choice of music is normally reggae. Apart from reggae, the deputy president would have played or hangla or any other tunes. But I don't think most of those, those artists would have agreed to that. Because of, you know, if you are a Luo musician and you play, your, your music is played in Ruto's rallies, then definitely you might have problems because people might not start listening to those your songs. So the choice of gospel song, in my view, was one of the best things the deputy president made. The second thing I noted in William Ruto's trip is that he allowed crowd to build. Of course, he mobilized so well, like a thousand border borders from, from Siala, escorting him coming down to town. A thousand border borders, that's not something you can joke with. Then these people were coming at a slow pace. More people joining them. So he was building crowds in a very easy and strategic way. And in my view, that's something we must give to the deputy president. So by the time he was reaching uh, Kisiani, was reaching uh, Juakali, even before, on his way to Kondele, crowd had already built up. I remember I was headed to town and I passed through that route of Juakali and I was like, what's really happening here? So crowd were coming huge crowd. So I was informed the DP was also almost about coming. His convoy was still down there. So he was able to, to build the crowd as he made his way to town. The third thing I liked about his, his visit was the delivery of his speeches. Forget about what took place in Kotele. If you listen to the deputy president's speech in uh, in uh, 
Kesian because that was the first now the first major event where he was coming face to face with people his delivery was so perfect the deputy president never uttered the word mganga he never uttered the word reggae the deputy president never uttered the word tbims and talala he focused on his own messaging he focused on himself as the deputy president dr william samiruto but there was an incident in Kondele. The chaos. What really transpired in Kondele? As a matter of fact, yesterday the deputy president William Ruto was supposed to address that particular rally in Kondele in the evening. That did not happen. And when I inquired, it did not happen because of three reasons or four. I was told by a friend called Loso, you can check his Facebook page, he even told me. He, he has even updated it that uh, he knew something was going to happen in Kondele. I was told that the main reason why he did not visit Kondele yesterday was the fact that his team did not mobilize well. Or if they mobilized, the crowd had waited and left. And because the deputy president wanted a situation where pictures were going to show huge crowds, that's why he did not make it yesterday. The truth of the matter is that during Madaraka, was it Madaraka? day celebrations the deputy president was well received in kisumu kondele to be precise and therefore if the crowd was not going to be enough then it would have watered down that particular momentum so he wanted us to go to kondele when there is crowd yesterday that crowd was not there number two there were also intelligence briefings that certain elements were not comfortable Either there were, there were divisions within the people organizing William Ruto's trip or there were just politicians who wanted to take advantage. Or maybe the ODM supporters were not comfortable with the deputy president coming there after the statement he made at Siala. And again, I was told he did not come to Kondele yesterday because his team felt that he arrived late. And therefore, going to Kondele at night was actually risky. And that's why he went to Siela via, via Sinyolo, via, via Kakamega Road. Then, then uh, what's the market? There's this market heading, then you go to Sinyolo. But there's this particular event in Kondele. Let me make it very clear. That nobody, and I've repeated this severally, nobody can actually leave his or her house to go and heckle a politician. Nobody. Unless they are mobilized, facilitated. Of course, there are instances where you can heckle someone. Someone can speak things which are lies, and then you tell them, no, it's not that. Or someone can talk, abuse some leader, and then you're not comfortable. Then you say, no, no, Apana. Like, let's, let's assume if the DP had abuse Raila Odinga like Mganga, then the crowd would have said no. But that did not happen. So nobody can actually leave their homes to go and heckle another politician. I have two theories of what might have happened in Kondela. And it's going, to be, it's going to be unfortunate. The first theory is that probably there were people who didn't want William Ruto to have a successful rally in Kisumu. And therefore, Kondele was going to be a, a, a no-go zone. Number two, William Ruto and his team knew about all this. But they were keen on advancing a narrative that the laws are violent. And therefore, chaos had to be caused. Let me begin by talking about if this thing was organized by ODM. I've read that. What will ODM as a political party gain by stopping William Ruto from addressing people in Kondele? Of course, Kondele is volatile. That's a fact. But what will they gain? If William Ruto, let's say, if William Ruto just went to Kondele, addressed the rally, and left. as a huge rally. That will not change anything. As we speak today, those who will vote for Raila Odinga are already decided. 
and those who will vote for the deputy president are already decided. I want to assume that it's a possibility. But I don't want to give it much consideration. My second theory, and it's something I stated yesterday, that there's always these plans and schemes to portray the Luo nation as violent. William Ruto is known as one who has always portrayed the Luos as violent. And I'm going to play a clip of that at the end of this video. I want to assume that that was not the objective. But if the organizers of this event organized it so well, because the event was a huge success, and then they decided that once we reach Kondela, we should not leave Kisumu without creating this chaos. If you ask me, if Ruto was listening, he would have avoided Kondele. But again, avoiding Kondele would have portrayed him as a coward. Because all indications were showing that Kondele was hostile. People were demonstrating, people were singing praises of Relo Dinga. People were captured on TV. Me personally, I watched it on NTV. People dancing. That to not attack a person had to attack a wheelbarrow. Not just a handful of them. That was way before the deputy president landed in Kondele. So that alone was enough to caution, I'm sure, the intelligence briefings he gets must have told him that Kondele is hostile. And therefore, if you can, please avoid. But that was not the case because someone was out to portray the Luo community as a hostile community. And that's what I have a problem with. And that's why it's only in Kondele where the deputy president was talking of giving Boda Boda guys 2.5 million and giving Mamamboga, 2 million. Kondele market is not as big market per se. It's just a small center. In case that was the scheme, then the schemers got it wrong. But in case ODM and its supporters or her supporters were behind the chaos, Again, it's very, very unfortunate. That's something we should not be allowed to take place in this country. If you don't want to listen to someone, please don't go to their rallies. Personally, if I wanted to listen to the deputy president, I would have just left whatever I was doing because I was in the morning, I was at Royal Dental Clinics for some uh, checkups. I would just leave whatever I was doing, then go and listen to him. Just listen then leave. But you can't go to someone's rally and then stone their vehicles. Of what benefit? You. Because you've stoned the vehicle. Let's say someone paid you 1,000 to do that. You are going to drink it and maybe have supper. So will you be happy eating supper with your family because that supper was provided for by someone to cause chaos and someone's vehicle is smashed because of you. You pussy in Aujinga. Ikome. And if the intention was to portray an entire community as violent, then that must also be condemned. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Bye bye. Kwani hao watu ambao wanatuambia saa hii story mingi kwani sisi hatuwajui? Sisi tunawajua? Ni watu ya kubomoa. Kama hawabomoi chama, wanabomoa nyumba. Kama hawabomoi nyumba, wanangoa reli. Kama hawangoi reli, wanatenganisha marafiki. Sasa hii watu ambao tunawaelewa, alafu tunawa we are, we are entertaining them for what purpose?